Hello, this is Joe Catalano coming to you from Just Velocity Studios in Fort Myers, Florida. On behalf of Mitra 9's ongoing podcast series, Carver Kratom and Community, today I have a special guest and friend, uh, Donnie Seabrook. Um, most people in the Carver community um, recognize him and uh, love him. I haven't met anyone that doesn't love this guy, and I think during this interview you'll see why. Donnie, how are you doing today? Of course I'm doing better now, Joe. You know, it's all love with me, man. That's that's what I represent and um in the Calvin Creative community. I just feel like it should be about love. That's where it starts at. You know, cuz love like love overpowers everything. And if you let love come first, you won't really have no problems. Like really. If you just genuinely love people, it'll work for you. You know, and I think th- that's why we hit it off so well in the beginning. Um, we would sit down and have great conversations, and I could just feel that love sort of seeping from your pores and wanting to be loved back. Uh, a handshake and a hug is very common yes, amongst uh, you and your friends, um, which is amazing. Oh, yeah. So your life's going pretty good right now. It is. It's going, you know, it's, it's going really great because I've met so many people in the Kava community and you yourself, you know, you just, what you represent and how you operate is like really phenomenal because you know how to bring the business ideas out of people. You know how to actually put it in right in the, so they can see it. Like, and you're a very good teacher and a very good mentor. And I always admired you for that. Like when I first I met you, I was that. like, yeah, you, you really know how to put it into aspect, like let people see their own vision. You know how to put it out of people. And the Kava community needs people like you and needs people like us, myself, because you like, and you and you don't charge or ask for nothing. You just <laughs> do it out of love. Yeah. So I just figure that's the only way you, I'm, you operate. I'm taking a page out of your book, for sure. Yeah, you do it out of love, man. Absolutely. I definitely appreciate that, how, how you operate, man. You, you're a very important part of the Kava community, and um, it would be, without you, it would not be as good and strong as it is. I appreciate yeah. those comments. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, um, you're, you're a business owner in yes, a sir. sense. You're, um, you're building a business, and I want to find out more about that. Um, people in the Carver community are excited. I know that um, you have merchandise that people can buy or, oh, yeah. you know, and um, be able to display, mm-hmm. um, you know, what your shirt says. Much love by Much Better love Now. Much love by Better Now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but things weren't always like that. Tell me a little bit um, about the Donnie I know little about. Yeah, the Donnie, the, 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 before the Much Love, before the Mr. Better Now, it was always a, like a darker side. But it was the, to the point where, like, where I was raised and where I was you know, brought up at. You know, when you grow up in a struggle, you put a whole bunch of struggling people together, poverty-stricken communities, you're going to get violence, you're going to get crime, you're going to get all of that, you know, just growing up like that. And um, I just grew up in an area where... Love was only shown a little bit, you know. It was only, it wasn't shown like abroad, and you know what? Um, and people just weren't, you know, they just weren't like on, on the same. I wasn't even in the space where I'm at now. I was in a dark space where I just felt like I was in protect mode and survival mode. Basically, it's just, and I end up getting in trouble. Like when I was young, 16 years old, I end up getting in trouble. You know, taking my six years of my life away, doing, you know, prison. Like, it was it was pretty, it was not good. It was not a good childhood for me. Like, it's at a six, at a young age, you know. But um, just like I said, when, when, when you're around a bunch of people, that's everybody want to take, take, take. And, you know, it's just like, it just, it turns into something different. And a lot of people don't even know about these kind of communities because if you've never been there and never, you will never know what goes on in these communities, you know. That's what changed my aspect on life. When I went through this in life, prison, getting shot up, you know, it's been a lot of stuff in my life. I got shot six times, twice in the chest, four times in the back. Like, and I was like, you know what? And things were pretty dire at that point. Oh, yeah. It was like my life was almost over. But you know what? I you know what made me come up with love because I knew God loved me to save me from all of this stuff I've been through. So, Amen, right? mm-hmm. yeah, he loved me. Well, 
I'm glad that you're here. So and, um, you know, it's amazing what you're doing and how excited everybody is. Tell us a little bit about Much Love by Better Now. Well, Much Love by Better Now was created, like I said, just on a, it's a promotional feeling. I just want, like, everybody I'm around, as you can tell, I'm always joking, laughing, hugging, you know, just making, uplifting one-on-ones with people, just sitting down talking, listening to people's problems in their life, because I know everybody needs somebody to listen to, and that's somebody to listen to them. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm going to be that person because I wish I had people to listen to me when I was younger. So my thing is I just sit down out of love. And you can come to me with anything, and I'm going to just sit there, and I'm going to give you my input on it. Like, if you ask me honestly, I'm going to give you my honest input. So much love came from that just by me loving people, love to be around people, love to socialize with people. I've always been like that, but I just, like I said, I was in survival mode. So, you know, sometimes you got to be a certain way at a certain time in your life. But now I feel like it's nothing that I have to, like, be tough about or, you know, I can actually just be the way I need to be, love and caring. And, and that's where the company came from. The much love is me. That's what I represent It's just love. And I, and I expect, like, when I'm around people, I like to make them laugh and like to make them happy and stuff like that. So it's just, it's good. It's good. So the company itself is not an entity or or... Or brick and mortar is not nothing. It's actually just a feeling. Because when I, when I ask somebody, somebody asks me how I'm doing, the first thing I tell them, better now. And when you tell them that, it actually makes them feel good because they think you're talking about them and you're telling yourself that. So you're like uplifting yourself and the person that you're talking to. So it works both ways. So that's where much love by better now came because I want to uplift and make people happy. And if I'm ever at a down point in my life, I hope people will come in to me and do the same and help uplift me because, you know, life gets tough sometimes. You know, you just need people to talk to. Absolutely. So the business technically isn't fully operational. No. Um, but it could be very soon. Oh, yeah. So you're, you're, you're doing all the groundwork. You're building the foundation mm -hmm. um, to bring a great product oh, yeah. um, to the market. What are some of those products uh, that you'll be carrying? Well, the products I carry is, of course, like because we're in the Kava community, of course, it's going to be Kava and Kratom. But um, it's going to be like I do it on a different scale, a different level. I don't know if I'm going to go, you know, which way I want to take it. I just know I want to put a good product out there that makes people, you know, help them feel better. You know, it uplifts their mood. And the fact that I've been three surgeries on my hip. And, you know, I know Kratom works for me. Like, it works for me. It helps me with the hip pain. And it's been going ongoing for almost three years, like drinking Kratom. So I know I'm not putting it towards a medical thing or anything, but I know it helps me personally, like, if I well, drink Kratom. You told me, like, right after your surgery, you, the doctor prescribed, like, a week's supply of uh, pain medicine. Mm -hmm. And you didn't take it. You did didn't not take it. it. I did not take it. Because I, I was like, you know what? Um, I've always been drinking, like, like during this pain, I'm not like I'm not a drug user, so I'm like, uh, no, nah, I don't think that's gonna work for me. I, you know, I don't want to be a, you know, addicted to anything. So I was like, you know what, kratom was always is working, and it's it's all natural. It's a herb, you know, it it grows. So I'm like, what's the best way to do, deal with the pain than something natural? You, it's like a tea. You just brew a tea and you drink it, and it subsides my pain. It does for me, you know. So I I am living proof that it works for me and my pain. So uh, instead of getting on pharmaceuticals and like turn into a whole another person, you know, that's addicted to something. This is by far a better product to deal with anxiety, pain, you know, um, energy. It just like, it, it's all different strains for different things. And it's, and it, it, it works. It actually really works. So uh, tell me a little bit about, um, you said in the past you used to drink. Oh yeah. That, that was big in, in, in your community. Oh yeah. Um, how do you feel about that now, and what are you doing about that? Well, alcoholism is uh, was dominant in my family, you know, and um, I used to drink heavily, and I just thought about all the risks that I was taking as far as drinking. Like, you, you have, it's all negative. Alcohol is like, you don't have any control. You feel like crap the next day. It's like it doesn't have any positive. You're just having fun while you're doing it, but, like, all the backlashes on it when it's over, you still got the same problems, probably worse problems, what you created when you're on the alcohol. So I'm like, you know what? I want to be around people that I can hold a, a, a intellectual conversation with, and we remember it 
We're not in the bar drinking alcohol. Wait, wait, we don't remember. Right. So I said, you know what? Kratom is the thing that you can drink and have an intellectual conversation. Remember it. Come up with ideas. Come up with business plans and everything. I was like, wow, this is like, it really has me focused. And I was never able to do that on alcohol. So this is by far a way better, safer alternative. If you want to feel good, a good feeling, this is the way to go. If you, you're you trying to do something with your life and you're trying to be safe and re- be there for your family and raise your kids and family without getting in trouble, this is the way to be. Alcohol is, I, it was a big problem and I had to stop. So this is what helped me. Yep. I like this, Donnie. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I've had uh, a lot of conversations with people um, that used to drink in the past and I had one really good friend tell me, Joe, you wouldn't have liked me. No. Neither was you wouldn't like me yep. either. I was it was like a whole different person. Like I'm like, uh, and the funny thing about it is, when I be around my buddies and stuff like we was hanging together, we was in the studios and all that. They used to record it, like us rec- studio sessions. Yeah. And the alcohol had me to the point where like I was so aggressive, and acting like just disorderly. And so they showed the video back to me the next day, and I was like, bro. That cannot be me. Like, I couldn't even recognize myself on the alcohol. It was, it was that bad. Like, I was like, I got to change this. Like, because I don't like to be the guy that nobody wants to be around or, oh, there he go, he's drinking alcohol. Like, no, nah, man, I got to change this. That's not a good look for anybody. But I knew it wasn't a good look for me. And you've changed that because I don't know a person in this community that wouldn't want to hang around you. Thank you so uh, much. And talk to you, absolutely. Thank you. you know, but, you know, I really... Um, I'm really excited about what's coming down in the future. So um, much love by better now. Really, you have three main parts of this business. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, the three main parts. I have a, uh, I have a uh, Kava music and fashion part of much love by better now. Because it all goes hand in hand. Like creativity with creativity. Because I've been doing music for like ever. So... Um, the music part is, is just me. That's like like what I do. I, I I don't know how to play one instrument, but I tell everybody I am the instrument. So I create. I am a good creator as far as the music thing goes. The kava and kratom is what I learned how to do being in the kava community. I was like, you know what? I want to create a product with a much love on it that helps everybody to feel good, you know? So I really got into the the brewing part of a uh, brewing kratom. And I just kind of like, you know, just been over almost a year span, kind of like figured it out. You know, I kind of figured it out. Now I've, I've tried some of your product and I'm not just saying this cause we're on a podcast yeah. right now, but it is one of the best um, products out there as far as uh, taste and strength. If you want to call it that, Thank you. what makes your product different than so many products that are out there right now? What well, is actually, um, it's, not to knock anything, it's, it's, it's a brewed tea. It's not a seltzer. It's not anything. It's like if you want the tea experience of k- Kratom, then I'm going to give it to you. And then um, I can take the strengths to levels that can have you, you know, I can take it to a point where you're, you're going to feel it. Like my brewing process is totally different than everybody's. You know, I just, and I kind of figured it out on my own, like how to take it to different levels of relaxation, pain, you know, energy. I've been doing it for a while, so yes. it's like, and the flavoring. I I am a uh, like a person. I am a perfectionist when it comes to like music and creativity. Period. So the the flavoring of it, I want to have flavors that stand out. You know, because kratom is is all over the place. Yeah. You know, so I have to have something that's very unique and very different, and and you're gonna feel it. Something that is worth paying the money for. You know, when you get it, you want you you want to feel it, and um. I'm very good at like brewing to make it stand out in the And you were self taught in that self taught. I self taught myself how to do it, a lot of experimentation, a lot of hours up, you know, hours and hours and hours of just trying to come put stuff together, you know. It, it, it's kinda like a science experiment when you when you think about it. And um I finally figured it out and I was like, Well, now yeah, I can take it to levels and I can brew a lot, a large quantity by myself, you know, at one time. Like, I'm, I'm on a, like, 100 gallons a day level now, just by myself. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, 
What about the music part of it? We know you write songs, you write music, oh, yeah. uh, you sing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about how you brought music into this. Well, the music is all like the treble clef. I always wear the treble clef, and it represents, treble clef is the beginning of a music sentence. It's not even a note. So, you know, I just felt like the treble clef represents new beginnings of anything that you're doing, and hope to God that they're positive beginnings, you know. So, um... Music has always been my love, always been doing. I've been doing music since I was a kid, you know, and it's just like I write, I write life experiences, and sometimes it ain't as positive because that's what I've went through. But now the music that I'm doing now is more positive. It's more promotional geared towards, like, you know, um, promoting products and, you know, um, just happy-feeling music. Like it, my whole thought process on music is changing now. Right. So you weren't always into this type of music? No, it was like street music. Like like what I was seeing, what I was experiencing, what I was doing, it was all street music. Like you writing your lifestyle basically down on a piece of paper and you ex letting other people see how your life was through your music. And um, I felt like now that my life is changing, it's going in a positive direction and all that, my music is getting positive, it's getting better. You know, it's all because I can't write about negativity if I'm not doing it. So like now it's just like all happy and I just like to make people feel good. So it's that's, it's just awesome that the transition that I've made from the person that I used to be. And I, of course I go to church every Sunday and I and I believe in God wholeheartedly. He is a he is a the most important part of my life. So um when I talk about God, it really is like God is really included in my life and I make decisions based on God being in my life. Like if I make this decision, would God approve of it? Yeah, I do that. Absolutely. You know, um, one thing that's a little off topic, but um, one thing that I saw is we, we both have a, a young friend uh, in the community. And um, I remember having numerous conversations with him where he said he didn't believe in God and things like that. Tell yeah. us a little bit about <laughs> how, like, how'd you do it? My buddy Julian, man, it's like a little brother to me, you know. And um, I had sat down, I was talking to him. I was, he was like, I was like, hey, bro, I'm going to church this Sunday. He was like, well, I really don't believe in God. I say, I say, well, you know, I can't try to convince you about God. I said, but the only thing I can do is take you there to church if you're willing to go and see how you feel, like see the feeling that you get. Because as soon as I walk into church, I feel something that, like I feel a great energy in it. And it just pulls because I feel the greatness, the, the love of God. And um, I said, if you just go, you'll see. Like if, it just, if you like it, you, you do. If you don't, then you try it. And then he kind of like said, he was like, Donnie, you know what? I like that. I said, okay, well, we're going to go. And his mom brings him to church. And uh, he actually enjoys it. And I, he was up to the point where he wanted to get baptized. Baptized, yeah. He I was, was telling like, me. He was wow. so excited. And, yeah. Uh, it was great. And, like, I was just, uh, I kind of stayed away mm -hmm. from God and religion with him because um, I, you know, I didn't want to try and push him into something but you did it in a different way uh -huh. and it really changed the way um he thinks and feels about a god and church so, oh yeah he yeah. loves it man he loves it. i he was impressed it. with that absolutely thank you thank you you know uh getting back to the music part of mm -hmm. your business um just before the podcast you mentioned that um you have a song oh yeah yeah i got a better now jingle yeah you know i did it like in a, a mode where i feel like Kids could actually sing this. And I have never written a song that a kid could sing. But um, I feel like this is so positive that, like, it just is for kids that can talk to adults that, you know, old people. Like, it's a feel-good song. It's just a jingle. That I hope it makes everybody feel good, you know. That's what I'm – and I've never written a song that a kid could sing. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So um, do you think Donnie should uh, play that song for us right now? Think so? Let's do this. Let me yeah, see. Absolutely. Let me see how it sounds. Let me see how it sounds. Better now, jingle. If you ask me how I'm doing better now, now, just wanna see you smile when I'm around. I pray I lift your spirits when you're down. How you doing? I'm better now. I'm much love. I'm better now. If you ask me how I'm doing better now, now, just wanna make you smile when I'm around. A hug feels good when you're down. Feel good. Visit me at muchlove by betternow.com.
go. That's the first time I've heard that. That's, yeah, that's, that's the, awesome. That's jingle. Then, uh, it does. It makes me smile. It makes you smile. That's what you want to do. You want to smile. Did you smile? You I smiled. Laugh. I smile <laughs> every time I hear it. Yeah. And I can just, I'm getting ready. I think I'm going to get ready to do like a little video, a little promotional video for it. And I want like little kids in the background just saying, and you know, with the, if you ask me how I'm doing better, like if you start teaching them when they're young to feel good about themselves and, you know, raise them up like that. Teach them to be confident with their self. Not cocky, but confident. You know, love their self. Love other people. It starts in the household. So with everybody with young kids, man, make sure y'all teach them how to love people. Make sure you teach them that. Because you give them love in the house. So when they're outside the house, they should be able to, you know, dish it back out. Because it comes back in a circle. If you love, your energy yeah. will come back energy, to you. Energy, comma, you hear it called a lot of things. And oh, yeah. I, I believe in that truly. So do I. I believe in it wholeheartedly. And the energy that I pick up from the Kava community is all love. Like everybody I talk to, even if they're down, I'm going to come in there, I'm going to say something, we're going to laugh, we're going to joke. And at the end of the day, we're going to be leaving smiling because I'm already smiling and hopefully I can make other people laugh and smile. And if they need a hug, I'm a, I'm a hugger. That's what I do. I hug people. And so, you know, a hug always feels good. Like no matter what it is, a hug going to uplift you just to know that somebody cares. Yep. Hugs increase your oxytocin, which it does. is the love hormone. It you does. Know, get you feeling good. It does, man. And that's why I always hug. That's why I always shake hands. You know, I always greet people. How you doing? And I have my, you know, my little comedy things I be doing. Like, yeah. How you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing better now. I'm still pimping. Ain't nothing changed, baby. You know, I got to throw that <laughs> you in. You had there. to say that. You <laughs> had to throw it in. I had to throw it in. I had to do it. <laughs> but that's a good feeling, you know, just to make people smile. As soon as you yeah. say it, they laugh. And that's the whole point of the things that I do. Yeah, it's just to uplift people, Joe. And you have always been around since the beginning. Like, since I've actually came to Carver Community, I've known you. And um, and the way you come at people, like, you are just, like, you, you, you're you a dominant force. Like, you're a <laughs> dominant force in, in this cover, and you play a big part in it, you know, and you inspire me because you're a businessman. And what I do love is to do business and make people laugh. And, like, you, you did, whether you know it or not, you did a lot of things for me. You make me think a lot. Okay. You make me think a lot. You make me observe like like how to do things and how to go about it. And and from a business aspect, you are a genius, and I and I, I appreciate that about you. Well, we we did do a lot of work together in an entrepreneur club that we put together oh, yeah. uh, a little over a year ago called Earn. Yes. And uh, I know that we did a lot there. We did a lot. You did a lot, and you are very good at explaining, like writing it down, explaining, like actually letting people see it. Like it's hard for me to do that. Like everybody has their their, you know, their ways about doing things. I can make people laugh. I can do that there. But you have a good way of explaining to the point where you can actually see your vision. And I I, I admire that about you. I really yeah, I had it. you think one year in the future. Yeah, what is your... the, that was the hardest thing to do. You had me thinking yeah. one year in the future. I'm like, wow, one year in the future. And you actually brought it out of me. Like I was like, I would have never thought to that level to think, seeing myself one year in the future. Like, what am I gonna be doing? One year in the future, like, and it was that's that's genius. I, I definitely love the your method of teaching and you know molding, help mold these young entrepreneurs coming up. Very good at it. So, tell us uh, about the fashion part of your business and what could we expect? The fashion part, oh man, if I am like I love walking around, getting dressed up, looking nice, whatever. Like you, like we both do, and uh, the fashion part of much love is going to be like. Much Love is a brand in itself. It's branded. So I'm going to, like, create, like, nice, like, elegant sexiness. I'm bringing sexiness to the Kava community, like, because Much Love is a sexy brand. And we're going to bring, like, you know, nice college shirts. Nice, uh, well, I got T-shirts and crop tops for women right now. It's just, it's all about sexy to me. Because I feel like the better you look, the better you feel. And that's the fashion part of uh, Much Love, man, because... When I dress up, I feel like a million bucks, even yep. though I ain't got a million bucks, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, I've you know, seen you dressed up. Oh, yeah. This man has um, shoes for any outfit he has <laughs> in his closet. I try to. I try, but yep. just because I know if you, to make yourself feel better, you're going to, you're going to, a man, a man of light, we're going to groom ourselves. We're going to dress up. We're going to look nice, you know, just because that's who we are. And uh, pe when people look at you and they see a well-groomed person, they believe in you more yeah. and if, than if you're not groomed. You know, if you're like, how are you going to represent something and you're not looking the part? So you have to look the part. And that's where the fashion part comes in with much love. It's like sexiness, like gentlemen's clothes. I'm going to get deep into it, like colognes, 
perfumes. I'm trying to get into all of that, and and that's a much loved brand because we we represent sexiness. Do you have a time frame, or can you talk about a time frame when we might be able to actually frequent your business? Well, right now it's up in the air because of my situation, and so I really don't, you know, I really can't put a time frame on it. Okay. I just know like brand recognition is what I'm trying to do now. Like, and that's mostly promotional. Everything I do now is promotional. It's just brand recognition. So once you see the heart, you automatically know it's much love, you know. But I, I don't really have a time frame on when I'm going to be dropping all of this. I'm just putting stuff out. Like, m mostly everything I do, I give it away. Samples of teas and stuff like that. You know, just to let people try it out, just to yeah. see if they would like it, you know. So I don't really have a time frame on, on what's going And I really don't know how long it's going to take to build the brand because you basically have to be branded when you're like, if you're trying to sell or promote anything, you have to brand yourself. And that's, that's the level that I'm on now, just branding, right. giving it away, letting people know, Hey, this is much love. Like how you feel. Yep. Building that foundation mm -hmm. for that brick and mortar yes. um, place. And that's coming in the future. Yes. It's coming. It's coming. I just can't tell you exact when, but it's right. coming soon, right. you know? And I just put everything in God's hands. It's, it's in his timing. So whenever he decides he wants to, you know, put it the plan right in front of me. That's when it's gonna work. It's always worked for me like that. So I just go by that. You know, I really don't. I really don't kind of plan stuff. So is your uh, feeling, your desire, your excitement, just as strong as it was, say, a year ago when this came into mind? Oh yeah, it's even stronger. You know why? Because I see people actually representing the brand now. I actually see people like, even when I'm not around, like they're wearing the Better Now Much Love shirts. It's like. That's a motivation in itself to see that people are actually liking what you do. So it's it, I'm more motivated than I was a year ago because a year ago I just had a, a idea, and now it's actually into production, and people are actually su supporting the brand. So I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta ride out with this, like yeah. because like how can you go wrong with love? Like love is worldwide, yeah. so you can't really. There's not enough of it in the world. People are eager f and excited for it. Yep. They're searching for it. There's no cap on love. So like anything you do as far as much love and better now, those are feelings that can be worldwide. And well, it is a worldwide feeling. We just got to get it to the point where it can be worldwide. And that's the brand, the much love brand. Yeah. You know, I want to get back to um, the comment you meant, um, you said about grooming. Uh -huh. um, I have to bring them up. Uh, your dreads. Oh, yeah. Tell us the story and the history <laughs> of uh, your dreads. Turn towards the camera. Yeah. Let them uh, let them see what you got going on. Yeah, see, the dreads was, I, I've been growing the dreads, well, I was growing them for 11 years before my daughter was born and everything. And um, I just went through a phase in my life where I was like, you know, I want to be more corporate. I want to look more presentable. So I just like cut them off. Cut them off. But you didn't throw them out. I did not throw them out. I always had a plan. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to put these back in. I'm going to put them back in. So I cut them off and kept them. <laughs> <laughs> How did you keep them? I kept them stored in a cool, dry place. All right. A cool, dark, dry place. Like, and uh, they, were, um, they were groomed. Before. When I cut them off, they were groomed yep. and everything. It's just I just cut them off and I uh, kept them stored. And I was like, you know what? I think it's time for me to put them back in. Like, but I want to have the much love colors in it. Nice. Okay. So, I got um, somebody to put the much love colors in it, and I went to my cousin, uh, Taylor Brazemore. Big shout out to Taylor Brazemore. Because she, uh, she sat down, and she pulled my hair, and she said, you know what, I'm going to put them back in for you. So she, put, uh, she did a work to her magic and connected the hair back to my regular, to my hair on my head, and I just felt like I had my powers back. Yep. When I put them back <laughs> in, I felt like I had my powers back, and I just and I didn't even realize it until I connected them back that I lost my. That I felt like I lost my powers. Yeah. So when they got connected, I was like, "Wow, this is really me." Yeah, they look good. I mean, you Thank wear you. them well. Thank and you. And sometimes so they're up, sometimes they're down. I love when you um, wear your little hat on top. Oh yeah. Just sits. <laughs> just sits tilt. there. Yeah. Yeah, Julian. <laughs> I laughed my butt off that day I saw you. <laughs> Julian actually, him and Miss Honey actually went out and got the hat. And um, he's like, Daddy, how you going to get it on your head? I said, watch this. So I just sat it on top of the bun and had it tilted sideways. It was actually pretty cool. I yep. like it. Yep. Yeah. 
and the dreads, it's just a part of me. Like it's like it's like anything that you've been doing for a long time. It's you remember the first question I asked when you said you had them stored? What what you had? I said, I, did they stink? Oh yeah, I was like, no, no, they didn't stink. I had them. I washed them right before I cut them off and right, everything right. and dried them. But I had them put up. You said they still smell like shampoo. shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good though. It, I was I just feel complete now. With my dreads back in, I feel complete because it's just me. Like, and I thought people used to frown on people with dreads. Like, you know, that's a that's a, like what they they had a look at certain people with dreads. But I'm like, you know, I'm here to change. There is no look on successful, positive people. There is no certain way you should look. I promote being yourself, no matter how you look, no matter what you do. Always be yourself. Yeah, I can. This, I got piercings and everything. That don't mean I'm not a good guy. You know, so don't judge the book by its cover. Get to know the person. Get to know the heart of that person. And that's where I put the dreads back in and the piercings to let people know I'm still the same person. I'm still the love. I'm still that, no matter how I look. And once we get past the look thing of people and start looking at that heart and see their, you know, how really how intelligent people are, you know, we stop judging people. Don't judge nobody. You know, no judgment. So um, if there was one thing either about you mm -hmm. or Much Loved by Better Now that you would want people to know, who is that? I want them to know that Much Loved by Better Now is me. It is a brand that I stand on because I believe in love and I believe what it can do and how powerful it is. And, you know, and I just feel like if the world showed more of this, the world would be a lot better place, man. It will be a better place. And I stand on love. And, and that's every time you see me, you're going to see me showing some kind of level of love. Like, it's just, that's just the way I am. And you know what? I thank God for blessing me to be like that. So anything you see from Much Love by Better Now, know that it's really love. It ain't just a name. It's real love. I believe it. Yeah, that's how it is. And uh, I ain't never, you know, I'm never gonna change from that. Like I'm never gonna, cause men, we we can show, we can show that we have a softer side, you know, cause that's what people want to see. I know we masculine and all that. There, we of course that's what we men. We're gonna take care of our family. We're gonna be we're, gonna, we're protectors by nature, but we can show that we do have a softer side and that we we can get on any level. We can get on a masculine level. We can get on a love level. Love, to the point where we're like we're understanding and that we can be talked to and that we can be you know we ain't always got to be uh, uh, this this no no we, we love so we listen but that's what a real man gonna do anyways he gonna he gonna be soft and masculine at the same time mm -hmm. yeah there's there's a, a phrase out there that often gets criticized um, that says a man needs to be a beast but know how to control it you're absolutely right, and that makes a lot of sense. If you can control that beast, you're a great man. You're a great man. Donnie, it's been a pleasure. You too, Joe. I appreciate and, uh, everything. Yeah, this, this is exciting. I'm happy for you. I hope things move along um, a lot quicker than, than, you, than you expect them to, and I better be there on grand opening. You know you will. Absolutely. You know you will, and I appreciate everything. that, Like I say, I appreciate everything that you're doing and that you've done and how you've helped me, you know what, that will never be forgotten. And um, I'm always gonna show love coming from me. I'm always gonna show love and never be forgotten how you've helped me to get to this level of mentality and thinking about how to deal with business. You are a big part of that and I appreciate it. So I know after this podcast, uh, people are gonna be intrigued by you and wanna learn more about you. Mm -hmm. um, where could they go um, to do that? Well, you can go to uh, Much Love by Better Now on Instagram. Uh, you can go to uh, Much Love by Better Now on Facebook. And then I have another uh, Much Love page that uh, it is uh, Instagram. It's the second Instagram page. It is Much Love by Better Now underscore Carver Kratom, I think. I think. Yeah. Give it a try. It might yeah, work. Give it right? a try. It might work. But <laughs> anyways, if you put in much love, it's going to take you to anyone. It'll probably pull yeah, up. It'll take you to it. Anywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. But 
you know, I'm not good at social media, but I'm I'm learning. So y'all gotta give me a little bit. All right. <laughs> Thank you though. I appreciate it. Man. Excellent. I Excellent. Appreciate it.